they have decided to move to a new Linux gaming launcher outside of Steam. If you don't know, I've kind of been bouncing around uh, different game launchers uh, for, of course, around three years now. Um, I used to use Bottles a lot, and I uh, still recommend using Bottles today. Uh, it's still getting updated, even though uh, it's mostly uh, sitting in maintenance mode while they make a new replacement to bottles which is bottles next uh I decided to move over to start using Lutris uh, for around a year or so. Uh, but the thing with Lutris is that if you see down here on releases, it's been quite a while since a last release. And if you don't know, the leader of the project uh, decided to basically leave Lutris and go and work at Playtron. Uh, Playtron is a uh, new uh, gaming Linux corporate company, basically trying to make a uh, replacement to Steam OS. Uh, and I personally have made some videos about Playtron OS uh, on my desktop, installing it and checking it out. And honestly, my opinion with the company is that they're pretty bad. I would say the developers do a good job, uh, but the people who actually work at the higher ups of the company have done some pretty bad things in the past, ruining some uh, projects that I personally did like as a kid uh, when I used to be in like custom ROM spaces and stuff uh, that they, they destroyed basically Sergeant and Mod. But besides that, uh, that person decided to go and work at that company to work on Playtron OS, uh, probably to just make a lot of money or something. I don't really know. Uh, but anyways, Lutris hasn't really gotten an update on the front end, the GUI application. And there's a lot of things that need to be changed in Lutris, in my opinion, uh, in today to actually make it, uh, you know, like the default behavior actually good. So what launcher am I using today uh, with Lutris not getting any updates and bottles kind of just sitting in maintenance mode? Well, I discovered uh, a, a pretty long time ago and I've kind of just kept it installed and, and kind of mean just mucking it around and just watching development on it to see how many updates it gets and see how many fixes it does. And I have like notifications turned on for it. So I get emails about the releases of it. And that is called Fugus launcher or Fargus launcher. I don't really know how to pronounce it, but it is uh, extremely good the Linux gaming launcher, I would say, uh, that is extremely minimal, I would say. And it says here, it is lightweight and it uses the Umu launcher as like the back end to apply fixes to games. And as you can see, the last release was three weeks ago. And if we look at the activity, uh, the patches was a week ago. So it is in active development, I would say, and it's being actively maintained. Uh, and if we do uh, install it from FlatHub, you can either go with the system package way. It's probably provided on those types of distro repos like Arch or Fedora. Uh, but on FlatHub, if we just search for it, um, you can easily install it. And before we go into that launcher, I wanted to talk about Heroic as well, because a lot of people want uh, me to try out Heroic, and I have been actually switching over to Heroic slowly. But personally, uh, you know, it does work well, but the problem with Heroic is that it doesn't have easy installs for the game launchers like Ubisoft, EA Play, the Blizzard launcher, or Battle.net launcher. Uh, you have to go and grab those .exes on the internet to actually then install them. Not a big deal, but I want something that is a bit more streamlined. And that's why I really do enjoy the Fugus or Fugus launcher, however you pronounce it. Uh, it is an extremely good launcher. One, just looking at it right now, it's extremely simple and minimal. Uh, it's just it's not like uh, Heroic or Lutris uh, where it's like really big and it has like a nice library or whatever and it has lots of different toggles for signing into different accounts. It's literally just uh, a list of your applications and games, uh, which you also can change this if you want to. If we go to settings here and we go to interface mode, we can change it to blocks. As you can see, now it's a bit more bigger or we can change it to banners. And as you can see, now it looks kind of similar to something like Heroic um, or Lutris, for example, but it's still very minimal because it's like just the games and the apps and nothing else, which I really do enjoy. 
And then the next thing is when you want to install a game or an application, you click the plus icon here, and then we have a list of some of the um, main you know, game launches that a user would install, uh, like Ubisoft Connect, Epic Games, EA App, Battle.net, uh, a Linux native game if you want to, or a Windows game when you run it through Proton. So as you can see, I already have some of these games installed and they work perfectly fine. If we open up EA app here, it launches up a little window, makes sure that GE Proton is up to date. It uses the Umu launcher backend as well and the Steam runtime as well which is a bit odd because it says it's used Umu, so I don't know what's up about that, but it still, it checks everything before it decides to launch it. Uh, and it, you get to see if it's actually checking for those things because a lot of the times, things like Lutris or Heroic, they don't really show the progress of what's going on in the background. Uh, so I do like how there's like just a little GUI window that appears and it just tells you some small things about what it's doing basically. So you can see EA app working perfectly fine here. Uh, and then when it comes to closing an application, you can just do uh, force close all running games, which will of course kill um, game launches as well. And then when it comes to installing a game manually, that is also pretty damn easy. I did decide uh, just for testing purposes, I'm not going to play any of these games. I decided to install some games legally on this launcher. And as you can see, it's Hollow Knight Silk Song and Outer Worlds 2. And what we can do here is right click on it and go edit. And we can see um, the path here, which is um, the .exe, I'm pretty sure, of this, which it is. You can see Hollow Knight Silk Song.exe. And then the prefix location. So it's really easy to install um, those types of games if you're not going to be installing games on game launches and you have them either owned and you actually have them installed on your system or you know you're sailing the high seas and you want to install those games you can do that pretty damn easily and just to show uh we'll pair my controller which is a 8-bit though sn30 pro plus um controller we'll pair this up and then we will test out these games just to show that they do work and as you can see here, uh, Hollow Knight Silk Song is launched and working uh, perfectly fine. And my controller is indeed working. So if we do start a new um, save, this all should just work perfectly fine. And when it comes to things like vibration, at least on my controller, it is working properly uh, with this game launcher. Uh, and yeah, here we are. So now, it, as you can see, it is working perfectly fine. And the other game that I did install, which is called The Outer Worlds 2. And this game actually just launched uh, the other day, like a couple of days ago. So I did install it and it did go through properly and I haven't launched it yet. So we're going to find out if this game actually does launch or not properly um, under just normal GE Proton. Uh, let's just see if it launches properly. All right, well, as you can see, it did fail to launch, and it's because it's missing a Visual C++ runtime. So I guess we'll try and install this through the launcher to see if we can actually um, get the game working. So this is where we will show off uh, more of the settings. So as you can see, uh, there is a lot of options that you can choose from when trying to run a game or a, a different application within this launcher. So within the miscellaneous, we can use the discrete GPU. We can disable the splash window. We can enable a system tray icon, which you can see down here. We can do start on boot. We can change the um, icon to a monochrome. We can do close when running a game slash app. If you like that behavior, you can enable that. Uh, there's also, you can use the Wayland, Wine, Wine Wayland uh, driver on Proton. And it says it only works with GE Proton 10 or Proton-EM-10. Uh, and then we have HDR as well. And the Wail64, if you want to force the applications to always try and translate to a 64-bit um, system. And there is uh, enable logging, of course, if you have any problems. Then on the left side here, we have uh, the default Proton Runner that you want to use when setting up a new game or a new application. And then we can click on Proton Manager. And this will bring up where we can download the latest GE Proton or Proton-EM. And you can use um, other Proton Runners. Like if you want to use Cache OS, it seems like you can use it on this application. 
Then on the default prefix tools, we have Mango HUD, Wine Tricks, which is what we're going to launch very soon, uh, Game Mode, Wine CFG, and Disable Hydro if you want to, which may fix controller issues with some games. And then if we want to run an application within the default prefix, uh, you can do that. Or I'm guessing you can do this on an application as well. Yes, which you can. If you go on to like Outer Worlds 2, for example, uh, you can do uh, the Proton uh, fix if you want to. If you have like a manual Proton fix, launch arguments, game arguments, additional application. So we can actually launch additional applications within this application. Uh, and then we can run actual separate files as well. So if you want to install, um, let's say some type of um, modding tool or something, or some like cheat engine, for example, the cheat engine, I think that's what it's called. People like to install that into the wine prefix to muck around with the game. Uh, you can indeed do those things. And then back into the settings on the left side, we have the lossless scaling location, which is just frame generation. It's actually not um, scaling. It's just frame generation on the application. Uh, if you know where that is stored, when you've installed lossless scaling, you can go and find that. And then it will apply itself when you launch the game, which is pretty cool. And then on the right side here, we have global environment variables. So if you have any type of environment variables that you want to force, which there wouldn't be really many to enable at this point, because there's so many toggles here for enabling a lot of those environment variables today, like HDR and Wine Wayland, that you shouldn't have many environment variables that you want to use. But I know there's a lot of environment variables that people may want to use when launching different games on this. And then there's a backup and restore setting. Um, if you want to restore anything that you may have had before, you can do that. And then of course, uh, 100% support this project because um, it seems like uh, this person who I've seen a lot of times on Reddit before, uh, and then I saw that they did make a game launcher. Uh, they've put a lot of effort into making this a really good game launcher, I would say. And I'm really impressed where it is today uh, and how well it is maintained for running different game launches and just different games installing them and just the ease of that um, is very good. So I would 100% if you appreciate this project, definitely um, give them a coffee or a PayPal donation. Now, when the Outer Worlds 2 did show up with that Visual C++ runtime error, it didn't specify which runtime uh, I need to install. So this might be a bit difficult to find out, but what we can do basically is just install every single runtime in the prefix and then surely it will just work. So when it comes to launching Wine uh, Tricks, it is pretty simple. We went on edit on the application, went to tools, launched Wine Tricks. And as you can see here, it did launch a Wine Tricks log and it started setting up wine tricks and as you can see now we have uh, the actual wine tricks uh, window launched where we can install many different things into the wine prefix and as we can see here the outer worlds 2 is now working properly um, thanks to a user on uh, the proton db uh, right here two days ago it said i needed to install the vc run 2022 and after i installed it with wine tricks as you can see the game is now working so probably what i will We'll do next uh, with this game specifically uh, is when because uh, it seems like this issue happens on normal if someone just buys the game from like Epic Games for example on Heroic uh, what I'll do is I'll open up a, a bug report for this game so that uh, the VC run 2022 can get pre-installed uh, when launching the game so that no one has to face this problem but as we can see um, the game is indeed working properly. Uh, there was no problems loading different like shaders and stuff. Um, so really good, uh, I would say, to see just how well uh, and reliable uh, this launcher is. I would highly recommend um, checking it out and trying it out, installing your game launchers, installing your games on it, uh, and you know, moving everything over maybe and just trying it out and seeing how well uh, you like it. So I would like to know your thoughts about the uh, Fugus or Fergus uh, launcher down below. Your thoughts about using it if, you, if you're if you using it as your main game launcher. Um, what do you think about it? Uh, I'd like to know if you've uh, you know, spoken to the developer online as well. Like if you opened a bug report, um, how is this person a developer when it comes to, um, you know, like talking to them about fixing problems and such? How well are they at fixing problems? Because it seems like uh, this developer has worked really well on, 
you know, just including everything uh, with this launcher. So I would love to know. And of course, if you guys did enjoy uh, this video, definitely give it a like, definitely subscribe to the channel. Thank you to my supporters. I'll show a text across the screen right now. Thank you for your money every single damn month. I really do freaking appreciate it. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.